Hello friends, how are we all doing? Today we're doing a little, little statistic-y, goalie check-in video, we're doing a mid-year check-in where we're gonna be checking in on my reading goals, which I never really think about. <laughs> I make them at the start of the year, then I read for the year, and then I see where we ended up at, <laughs> see whether we succeeded or not. So we're gonna be checking in on my reading goals and seeing how I'm doing on those. We're going to check in on my series progress, how many series I've been reading, how many series I've been finishing, and then finally we're gonna check in on TBR Cluedo and how I've been doing at reading TBR Cluedo books. So that's the plan. Um, shall we just dive straight into it? It's pretty self-explanatory. Before we get into the video, I want to say a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, which is Serious Readers. As you guys know, I am obsessed with my Serious Light and I am on a mission <laughs> to share it with you guys. I completely love it. This is my reading light from Serious Readers. I have the high definition light, which has an adjustable head, which is perfect. It has a dimmer. Let me show you. Whoa! <laughs> so you can adjust how strong you want the light beam to be. I also have the wireless one so I can plug it in to charge it, but then once it's charged, I can unplug it and move it around so it's portable. I absolutely love it. These lights are fitted with daylight wavelength technology, which replicates the daylight spectrum as closely as possible. So rather other lights often have blue lights or just lights that we're not genetically, biologically <laughs> predisposed to feeling natural in the eyes. This does. I cannot explain to you how it feels like nothing. It just feels like, oh, I, I, I've never really experienced anything like it. It's quite like a strange sensation because it's just perfect on the eyes. Like when you're reading, it feels so natural, so easy. It still has a coziness to it. So it's not like it's super bright when you're reading because I often like to read in like cozy settings at night. I use it all the time. I'm still using it throughout the summer, particularly because of where my bed is positioned. I often read in bed. Like I'm obviously and the light is coming in sideways. So having the light on the book really helps with eye strain. I don't get eye strain anymore, which I used to a lot when reading. And I absolutely love it. <laughs> I love it so much. So I have a code for you guys, which is MWB24, and that will get you a hundred pounds off a high definition light, which is the same model I have, and free UK delivery. A hundred pounds off is a crazy deal. I would really encourage you guys to take advantage of it and treat yourself <laughs> while this deal is running. And yes, the code is only for free UK delivery, but they can deliver internationally. They can install any plug. So your plug, US plug, EU plug um, onto the light as well. But the code is just for free UK delivery. So I'll leave a link down below if you guys check it out. I cannot recommend it enough. I genuinely use it every day, adore it, love it. Can't read without it. If I'm away and have to read without it, I'm like, oh. <laughs> Where's my serious light? So I love it so much. I'll leave a link down below for you guys to check it out. Okay, time to chat about my reading goal. So my first big goal was the number of books I wanted to read this year, and that was 150. I want to read 150 books. I want to read 150 books this year. Again, I'm setting my Goodreads to 100 until I reach that and then we'll up it to 150. I read 150 books for the first time ever last year. I'd never done it before. I'd tried and failed a couple of times. And I read, how many did I read last year? 151, it might have been. I read 155 books last year. So the closest I've ever come before that was 132. So yeah, I made it, I did it last year. And here's the thing, I always set my Goodreads goal to 100 until I hit it and then I up it to 50 because I do not deal well with negative feedback, okay? I don't deal well with it and I would be getting negative feedback right now. <laughs> me when Goodreads tells me I'm behind schedule. I hate us. <laughs> I want to be told I'm ahead. So right now, Goodreads is telling me I'm like 18 books ahead of schedule, 17 books ahead of schedule. I'm like, ah, woo. But in reality, I'm not because I don't want to read 100 books. I want to read 150. I feel like 150 makes more sense for like the amount of content I want to make, etc., etc. I have currently read at this day today, the 24th of July, I have read 74 books. And I did some math. And according to my math, if my math is correct, I should have read 84 at this point in the year to read 150 books. So I'm behind schedule by 10 books, which like alarm, 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 like alarm bells are ringing. However, July has been a really bad reading month. I've only read four books in July because of life, you know? So I'm not like feeling like, oh, I'm really behind. Like if I'd read kind of roughly what I normally read in, in a month in July, I would be maybe like one or two books behind. And I tend to read a lot in November and December just because they're really content heavy, reading heavy months. You know, I'm going to be doing the Goodreads Choice Awards. I'm going to be reading your best books of the year. I'm going to be doing some other really fun videos towards the end of the year. So I always seem to read more at the end of the year. So I'm not concerned. I'm not concerned. I still believe we can make it to 150, maybe then some, you know, I 10 books behind schedule is not 
without hope. If it was like 20, I'd be like, hey, you know, <laughs> holding my hands up in defeat. But 10 books, I feel like, maybe it's delusional, but I feel like maybe we can make it. Okay, what were my other reading stats? Oh yeah, okay. Another big goal was to have my best reading year ever, which would be above a 3.8 average rating. So my big goal, my big goal, this is the big goal of the year. I tend to have one big goal every year. And my big goal of the year is to have my best reading year ever. And what I mean by this is I want to have my highest average rating of a year ever. Since I've had booktube, I have always had a 3.7 average rating. I'm nothing if not reliable. And so my goal this year was to have a 3.8 or higher. So it'd be my, my best reading year ever. How's that going? Let's have a look at my yearly stats, my average rating is. I haven't looked in a while. Oh, 3.6. Woo! <laughs> I had a few really bad months. So in terms of my average rating each month, January was a three. January was rough as hell. Then February was a 3.9. March was a 3.8. April was a 3.8. May was a three. June was a 3.8 and July was a three. So out of the seven months, <laughs> we're being let down by three of them. And the other four are above the goal. So I don't know, hopefully we can turn this around in the second half of the year. I mean, it's something that like, isn't something I'm necessarily in control of. The number of books I read, the number of series I finish, the number of this amount of books I read, like I am relatively in control of. I'm not in control of my average rating because I'm like, I'm picking up books I think I'm gonna enjoy for the most part, but I'm just not, I'm not enjoying them. <laughs> Not enjoying sex. So, yeah. Oh, I don't know if we're gonna make it, guys. I don't know if we're gonna make it. Year of Rex, which was supposed to aid me in that. Oh, I mean, the last vlog was the celebrities one, which had an average rating of like 1.66. <laughs> it's not going great. It's not going great. Is this a fucking joke, Russell? I'm not being funny, but this, this is enough to send me over the edge. So, we'll see how that goes. I'm kind of feeling like I don't know if that's gonna happen. The best year, reading year ever. Cause it's not feeling like it. I'm not getting best reading year ever vibes. Now we can turn around the second half of the year, but will we? That remains to be seen. <laughs> what was my next goal? Okay, so my next goal was series related. So we'll leave that for when I'm gonna go check about series in a second. And then I only have two other reading goals. The first is to read four classics. I can do this. I can do this. I said this year was gonna be my classics era. I can do this because I know don't read classics, right? I enjoy them when I read them, you know, as you guys know, my favorite book of the year actually so far is a classic, Pride and Prejudice. My favorite book of the year and like Emma by Jane Austen was in my top, I think it was maybe six or five in my top 10 books of last year. So when I'm reading the right classics, I'm loving them babes. I'm like, uh, here's the thing, I'm not gonna be out here reading like old ass men classic. I like women, I like women classics for the most part. You know, I just like women. <laughs> You know, there's certain classics that aren't for me, but for the most part, when I'm picking the right classics, I'm enjoying them. So how many have I read? Because I should have read two, at least. Let's have a look. I've read two classics. We are on track, which I believe are Pride and Prejudice and The Feast, which I read for a video. I think it was one of the subscribers Year of Rex video I read that. I shelved that as a classic. I'm not shelving things like when I read Agatha Christie is arguably a classic, but I shelve them as mysteries. There's a few things I don't shelve as classics. If I read The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, which I'm not sure I will, but do I shelve that in your opinion as a classic or a mystery? I don't know, but I've read two classics. So we're on track. I've got another classic, which I'm gonna be reading in the next month or two. So I think we should reach this. I think we should read four classics, which I know is like crazy. And I'm like, oh, four classics, <laughs> woo! But for me, that's like, I've achieved something. I'm finally reading classics a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. I put them off, but I'm finally reading them a little bit. And then the final goal was to read 12 non-fiction. I've always said this, before I started my channel, I would read one fiction, one non-fiction, one fiction, one non-fiction. So my reading used to be 50% non-fiction and I would love to get that up again because there's so much non-fiction I wanna read. Let's chat about it because I think I'm doing great at this. I haven't looked up these stats beforehand, so let's just have a look. I have read so far seven non-fiction, which I'm really proud of. I've read seven non-fiction. Well, actually, technically I've read more because I've read also one true crime, which was Party Monster in the last video, and I've read three memoir, but I'm not really counting memoirs as non-fiction. Yes, I technically could. So technically I've read, like, if you're counting those two, I've read 11 non-fiction, <laughs> which is pretty fucking good, <laughs> which is pretty fucking good. But I'm just counting the pure non-fiction, you know? I'm not counting memoirs and Party Monster, 
I mean, I don't know how much of that was non was true. <laughs> you know, I think a lot of drug induced fabrication, not intentional fabrication, but like who knows, um, it was a dramatic retelling, I would say, of events. So yeah, I've read seven pure non fiction. I'd probably count. Would I count? I'd probably count like historical autobiographies in non-fiction. So if I read like Jane Austen at Home or The Agatha Christie Elusive Woman by Lucy Worsley books, I'd probably count them in non-fiction. But the memoirs I've read have been um, Britney Spears's. Oh, The Fonz. I read The Fonz, yeah. <laughs> and what else? Know My Name by Chanel Miller. So, you know, you can count them if you want, but I'm not counting them, but I'm still on track very much so to get those 12 non-fiction read. So I'm feeling pretty good. As a reflection on my goals, and we'll talk about this series in a second, but I'm feeling pretty good about my reading. You know, the 150 books, I believe we can get there. <laughs> I've just got to get reading again. I've forgotten how to do it a little bit the past couple of weeks. And the average rating, again, I'm not in control of. So I've really just got prioritised reading books that I really think I'm going to love, which is hard because, you know, I know you guys don't want to hear this. Sometimes people don't want to hear this, but it is a balancing act between the books I want to read the most and the videos I really want to make. And people are like, just, just make reading again. Just read the books you think you're gonna love. Don't worry about videos. You guys don't understand. Making the videos, making an experience, you guys, making a video with a concept is as much fun for me as the reading. It's as much a hobby for me as the reading. So it's just not possible. <laughs> <laughs> always and I think like the vlog I'm working on at the moment has so many books I'm really really excited for so you know you know <laughs> I think for the most part it is possible but sometimes it doesn't always line up there's some there's some vlogs there's one vlog I'm thinking of in particular that I'm gonna do in the next couple months which I am obsessed with the video idea I think I'm probably gonna rate the books quite lowly you know but that's okay it's a balancing act so anyways let's go talk about my series stats my series progress for the year so far Okay, let's talk about series, shall we? So my reading goal that I set for series, which I've set for the past couple of years, and I probably will set for a few more years, is to have a net negative with the number of series I'm currently reading. So I want to end the year on at least one less series currently reading than I started the year, which I'm probably gonna have that stat for a couple of years. I won't have it forever, obviously, because then I'll have like no series <laughs> I'm currently reading. But you know, it's just to try and like hold myself accountable because my natural instinct, as you'll see when I show you my spreadsheet, is based need to start series and not continue them. You know, that's my natural instinct. I love starting them. I don't love continuing them, but I do love continuing them because some of my favourite books are like further into the series when you really get to know the characters, etc. So I started the year on 34 currently reading series. I am currently <laughs> at 34 currently reading series, which is a pretty good position, I feel like. Like, I only need to make sure that I read a few more series than I than I start. So um, let's have a look at my spreadsheet. So this is my series to finish. Now, I do want to alert you guys, if you don't know, we made the choice at the end of last year, which you guys have been telling me to do for ages, that series that I'm up to date on do not count as currently reading, which I'm gonna have a little discussion about the logistics of that with you in a second. But um, yeah, any series that I'm up to date on, so I've read like the first three books, and the fourth one isn't out yet does not count in that stat so if I get up to date on a series I get rewarded as well so <laughs> there we go the oldest series of my currently reading Stalking Jack the Ripper I, god please let me finish this soon I've been reading it since 2019 I read the second in 2021 <laughs> Oh, I need to make progress. I do own the third one. I would love to finish it. To be honest, all of these series that I started in 2020, I'd love to like at least make some progress in and not only have the first book, which is these three. I'd have to read Tilly and the Lost Fairy Tales, A Sprinkle of Sorcery, and Seasonal Fears, which I'm a little bit nervous about because I know people haven't loved that as much, you know, which I'm not going to finish them because I have like five books in this series, but I maybe would like to read the second and just see whether I still want to continue because I really enjoyed, I read the second in the Sinclair's Mysteries earlier this year and I really enjoyed reading that and I would like to maybe prioritise finishing that series now that it's fresh in my brain. I think that's definitely a series I can finish this year. I own the third one. So I definitely want to make progress in that. But as you can see, there's been a few series, even just here in this early early series, because it's obviously all sorted by when I started reading them, you know, there's one, two, three, four series that I've made progress already in so far this year. I'm almost not as focused on finishing series at the moment, I'm focused on making progress in them, because something that p previous couple years, I was just focusing on finishing the series that were easiest to finish, like ones I had one book left, like finishing duologies, which I still, still makes logical sense, but it means the longer series, I just never prioritise them and never make progress in them. So I'm proud of myself for seeing some like little bits of progress 
Western series here. Then we reach a bit of a dry spell here, where I've only read the first book, you know? <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> and I own, like, the second book in all of these. I own Amara the Great Game, Until the Last of Me, Song of Silence. I own Har Do I own Harlem Sunset? Where is that? It's somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. I own hashtag no escape. I don't own hashtag murder funding, but you don't have to read these two in order. So I could read hashtag no escape. I own Royal Assassin. I own Dark Corners. So like I own a book from each of these series, from each of these series. So I should just make focus on them. Something crazy. This is kind of crazy. I'd love to not have any series on my TBR where I've only read the first book. Wow. Crazy. You're crazy girl. That is insane. I don't know if I'm capable of that, but I'd love to just, even if I, like, for this year, if I, for some reason, like, I end on the year on 35 or 36 current reading series, if I had made progress in so many series, and, like, you know, there was barely any books on my series on my TV, I already only read the first book, that would make me so happy. That would make me so happy. By the way, the kind of, like, um uh signage on these is it's underlined if i own the book it's bold if i uh, only need to read that book to finish the series and it's italics if it's not out yet some of these i don't think that is out yet but um some of these dates might not be right as well because like publishing dates change but anyways scrolling down this this series just got back added into the currently reading because this uh seven lively suspects just came out so yeah made progress in finley donovan but yeah these you know there's a lot here which I could make progress in, which I, I want to. You know, I've been good at making progress in some of these older ones, but I need to focus on some of these because I own the second <laughs> in a lot of these series. So I need to make progress in them. Oh God, I'm so excited for that as well. Oh God, it's so exciting. Isn't life so exciting? <laughs> I love reading. Now, here's the thing, up-to-date series. This is my up-to-date series. As you guys can see, I've made progress in, well, let's talk about it. I've made progress in two that got me up to date so far this year. Here's the issue I've realized, right? I don't think last year I started any series where only the first book was out, right? Like I think for all of these almost, I mean, this just got moved back up to be fair, but is it fair that if I start this year a series, but only the first book is out, so it's a new release, it's a 2024 release, which is the case of both of these, that it doesn't count to me reading these series. I mean, yes, it will count next year. Like it will come to bite me back in the butt, you know, <laughs> eventually, <laughs> like it will count eventually. But this year, if I start a 2024 release series, it doesn't add it to my total. Is that fair? Cause I'm up to date in these series. I can't read any more, but only the first, I've started them this year. So I've started this year four series that I am continuing. I'll show you all the DNF ones in a bit. I've started four series. So everyone in my family has killed someone. The second one is out. Pride and Premeditation. The rest of the series is out. So those got added to the spreadsheet. But I started Miss Austin Investigates and the Castle Knoll Files. And yeah, only the first book is out. So I'd love to know your thoughts on that. Uh, completed series, let's just scroll down quickly. I think I finished three. Yeah, I finished three series so far this year. This one... I'm unsure. I think there may be more in this series. I think there might not be. I mean, where do you draw the line between like a universe, like the Travis Bowdry universe and a series? Like if it's if it's following characters in a similar world with maybe a few like wink winks at the previous books, but completely different characters. I don't know if I'd, if I'd shelve it as a series. Like this is a series because this is a prequel to this. But if it's like a series in this world, you know, lots of authors have worlds. So I'd like to know your opinion on that as well. Like if his next book doesn't follow any other characters from Legends of Lattes and Bookshop of Bone Dust, apart from maybe like a few cameos, would you count that as a series or would you count that more as a companion book? Because I don't necessarily count companion books as series. Oh, one thing I might have to look in and add is I'm not sure if I should count the Abby Jimenez romances I read as a series. Let me know your opinion on that as well. So I've read Part of Your World and Yours Truly. Do I count Just for the Summer as a series? Because if so, I need to add that to my series list. Previously, I haven't but I'm leaning towards maybe I should. So these are all things I want your opinions on, but I finished the Forgotten Women series, which had been on my TBR for a long time, and I finished, well, before the coffee gets cold, I've marked as finished. There is gonna be more books in the series, but I'm just, you know, I don't wanna continue anymore. So I'm not marking it as a DNF'd series because I feel like it's complete for me. And then DNF'd, these are all the books down here, <laughs> which were the first books in series that I read this year that I'm not continuing the series. And it's not even me being picky. Like I didn't really like any of these. So I have read quite a few first books in series so far this year, but I'm just not, I'm just not continuing with them because I didn't really like any of them. And it's not even me being like, holding a very high standard for what series I want to continue in. The only one here that I think I gave a three, 
was Emily Wilde's, but I'm just not interested in continuing because I was disappointed with it. That one, no, there's too many books in the world. I don't want to continue it. I don't want to continue it. So anyways, this up here is my currently reading series. So let me know which ones you'd like to see me try and finish the rest of this year. Like I think I should prioritize these duologies because they're easy to tick off, right? But um, I really want to make progress in a lot of them. I really want to focus on making progress because like I said, I own like here, these I own the second one. These I own the second one. Like <laughs> these I own the second one. So I do own a lot of these books. So I'd like to continue making progress. Let me know which ones you want to see me read most. Um, and let me know, yeah, how do we feel about this? There's a lot of questions I've asked you just there. So let me know your opinions on any of them. But for the most part, I'm feeling really good about my series reading. I think I'm finishing a good amount. I'm not starting a ton and I'm continuing. I'm making progress in a lot of them. So yeah, I'm really, pretty happy. Let's go talk about how TBR Cluedo is going. Okay, let's chat about how I'm doing at TBR Cluedo because I do not read every book that's on TBR Cluedo in time. <laughs> briskly. So there was one a TBR Cluedo in January because I was ill at the start of the year and I'm not going to include July's TBR Cluedo in these stats because July is still ongoing. I'm still reading the books for July. I'll probably have read quite a few more by the end of the month because we've got like a big old week, you know, I'll probably have read quite a few of them by the end of the month than I have right now. So I'm only including five months from February to June in these stats. So out of the 30 books that were on TBR Cluedo in those months, I've read 26. You know, there's only four books that have appeared on TBR Cluedo that I have not yet read, which I think is pretty good. <laughs> I think that's pretty good. I can't remember what it was last year. I think maybe there was seven, but that was including January's. So there was there was 36 and I think I'd read 29 or something like that. So I feel like I'm doing a little bit better at TBR Cluedo this year, staying on track of it. In terms of how many books I read in their month though, I only read 15 of those in the month that they were supposed to be read. All of them were only one month after, apart from there was one book that was two months after. So for the most part, that's just like vlogs getting shunted back a bit or, I mean, there's four, five of those books are books that were for my book club, which I always read the next month. I put them on that month's TBR Cluedo because that's what makes sense because the book club votes on them but I always tend to read them right at the start of the next month maybe I start it in the previous month but I always finish it right at the start of the next month so that my thoughts are up to date for the live show I've got such a Miko hair somewhere on my face oh my god so I feel like I'm doing pretty well at keeping up to date with TBR Cluedo let's have a few graphs let's chat about the books that I have read so from February I've read five of the books March I've read five of the books April and May I have read all of the books they're on TBR Cluedo and June I have read four of them let me actually grab the four books that I have not yet read. So these are the four books I've been on TBR Cluedo I haven't read. February's is Hellion Death. I want to get around to this so badly. <laughs> Come on mother, you must be ready to serve up now. But it might actually make sense for me to save it because I think it is quite like a wintry uh, murder mystery. I'm so excited. It's a country house murder mystery. It's scandy cozy. It's got, uh, it's got a map. <laughs> I love it. I'm really, really excited to read this. I think I'm gonna love it. I just haven't managed to fit it into a video. March's is a curious beginning, which I know. <laughs> Listen, I know you guys want me to start this series so badly and I really want to as well. There hasn't been a video that I necessarily could have fit this into, but I also think I'm like avoiding it. And like, it's one of the oldest books in my TBR. I just am scared. I wanna love it so badly. People have like hyped this up to me so much <laughs> that I'm a little bit terrified, a little bit terrified. And then the two um, June books that I haven't read, we have The Push by Ashley Ordrain and we have Keeper of Enchanted Rooms by Charlie and Holmberg. So these are all books that I didn't have plans to read. They all ended up on TBR Cluedo through other means, whether that be through the Patreon uh, jar pick or through like another prompt, this is the only book that fit it, or like scrolling through Instagram and it's the first book I see, or whatever, you know? Yeah, I didn't have plans to read them. Every book that was on TBR Cluedo that I had plans to read, I have read. So we just need to fit these somewhere by the end of the year because I think this year, I didn't try this last year because, well actually no I did, but I didn't complete it. I didn't read every book that had been on TBR Cluedo last year, last year. I tried, I did a video like, how many can I read in three days? <laughs> because like December was crazy. But I feel like this year I can do it. I feel like I can read every book that ends up on TBR Cluedo. So that's my mission is to fit these into videos at some point throughout the year because I need to get to them. My average rating, interestingly enough, of the books I've read on TBR Cluedo is a 3.8. Is a 3.8. So for, obviously the books I'm putting on TBR Cluedo are more successful for some reason. <laughs> 
because <laughs> I'm hitting my my average rating goal with the books on TBL Cluedo. I maybe I need to like have a look at what books I've been picking versus what's been going wrong elsewhere. In terms of ratings, I've given one one star, two two stars, two two point five stars. Interestingly, you know, three stars. That's interesting. Four three point five stars, eight four stars, two four point fives, and six five stars. So pretty good pretty good ratings <laughs> to our Cluedo books. And just quickly in terms of genres, and these are the genres that when I rolled, they were classified as. So there'll be some books here that probably are more fantasy, but I, they're historical as well and I shelved them. They were a historical pick. It's whatever the pick was in the game. I've had two horror, eight mystery, three historical, two non-fiction, seven thriller, which I was surprised by, seven fantasy, two romance, and two contemporary. And that makes sense because fantasy and mystery and thriller to some extent on the board are like the biggest rooms. So it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. I'm surprised by that many thrillers. So yeah, I feel like I'm doing okay with TBL Cluedo. I really, really, I might do a video at the end of the year where like I really try and finish any that I have not read by the end of the year. But as of now, only four I haven't read and hopefully I'll be able to fit some of them into vlogs that are upcoming. So yeah, that's TBL Cluedo. That's how I'm doing. That's my transparency. Cause you guys are probably like, when I make TBL Cluedo, like how many of them are she actually reading? I've read 26 out of 30. So I'm doing, I'm doing okay. <laughs> so there we have it everyone. That was my mid-year check-in. Let me know what you thought of this. Let me know what you thought of how I've done in any of the areas. Let me know some of your info as well. How are you doing on your reading goals? Do you think you're gonna read how many books you wanna read this year? Are you ahead, are you behind? How are you doing on your series? Um, I'd love to know all of that down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you for being, in my opinion, the best community on the internet. <laughs> I love you all so much and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.